on me, go beast on no. them. I go beast, go deep, I OG on them. Apply pressure, put heat on them. Put that five zero zero degrees on them. Five degrees. Go dumb me, go beast on them. I go beast, go deep, I OG on them. Apply pressure, put heat on them. Put that five zero zero degrees on them. Count down, levitate, going up, elevate. Watch me demonstrate on time, never late. Short, short, there you go. The in and out. Fake, short, short. I've been scoring every day. Champagne Perrier. Since 9 3, been in the box now. Stepping up, coming on. There you go. There you go. There you go. Second place ain't nowhere new. Second place ain't nowhere new. I was starving, skinny, now my weight up. Got no energy for haters. See you trying, see you later. See you later. I'm shooting for the stars, need no laser beam. Blowing like the greatest, but it's one who's always greater. Yo. Go dummy, go beast on oh, no. I go beast. Go deep, I OG on oh, no. them. Apply pressure, put heat on oh, no. them. Five oh, no. zero zero degrees on oh, no. them. Five hundred degrees. Go dummy, go beast on oh, no. them. I go beast. Skin clear, this here my year. Yeah. Hey, look up here. up here, this here my tear. <laughs> Same fit four days. four days. I grind four ways. Four ways. I play hey, y'all, what it do, man? It's your big homie Bobby Dollars, and today we are back with another episode of the Bobby Dollar Show. But today is a sports edition. Yeah, this ain't just a regular episode. You hear me? Hey, today I got a, a famous interview if that's what you want to call it celeb somebody that uh y'all ladies be chasing the bag for you hear me <laughs> hey i got the homeboy man delvin bro on here man delvin bro senior because he do got a son you know what i'm saying on the other bro show hey delvin man say what's up to the people man how you doing today man what's going on man i'm uh, thanks for having me man hey, it's a blessing it's an honor man <laughs> I appreciate that, man. It's love. It's love. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. So um, <clears throat> I know you you playing Canadian uh, league ball right now. So they, they got you out in Canada. Um, how's the new normal out there, man? Like how how's everybody handling everything? Uh, you know what, man? It's pretty good, man. Um, you know, they uh, you, we actually went to uh, phase four, man. Um, oh. So, you know, they got a lot of more movement around yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, but yeah. you still also have to, you know, do your little six feet and everything just yeah. to, you know, everybody got to do the safety rules and regulation. But other than that, man, bars open, restaurants open, um, you know, and you're just living the norm, man. Okay, okay. Still got to wear your mask, <laughs> though. You still got to have that damn mask. Yeah, I mean, but that's just common sense. You already know, Absolutely. like, and Absolutely. not, not, and not the CDC coming out talking that real shit like it's been airborne the whole time. Well, motherfucker, you should have been said that. You know what I'm saying? Man, how you talking? How you talking? How I'm talking, man. You know what I'm saying? Crazy, <laughs> hey, that's what's up. That's what's up. Now, for the people that don't know it, man, that um that ain't been following you and everything, they might not know that you're from the great city of New Orleans. Okay, and we all know that's that was at home of Cash Money, Lil Wayne, and and oh, the, yeah, yeah. No Limit Soldiers. Oh, you know? yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure, for sure, man. Oh, and Ben Wise, that's like America's dessert, right? You know what I'm saying? So that's what's up, man. So, um, I'm my bad, man. I'm fat, bro. You know, I, I had to throw that in there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so tell me, man. I gotta, hey, I gotta give me some of that when I get back in, man. Hey, Come man, on, man, you can't beat them. I be watching them on like uh them cooking uh network TV shows. Oh, they yeah, be trying yeah. to they be trying to copy them and make them. Hey, man, <laughs> that's what it is. So, what was it like though, growing up in the NO, man? Man, you know what, man, it, it it was a little rough, um, you know, but but being from the city of New Orleans, man, you you always have that pride, um, yeah, yeah. And, and and that's what we have, right? Um, but no, it was cool, man. Um, you know, I had it rough growing up. You know, I was living in the uh, in, in the projects, so I have a bit of project for a while. Um, and, and, you know, I grew up there for a while until my dad uh, and mom and had to sign papers over to my dad so we can live with him. Um, okay. I ended up, you know, doing a lot of movement from here and there and, you know, moved to the New Orleans East. But, uh, you, you know, for the most part, it was straight, man. It was cool. You know, I, I love being from New Orleans, uh, especially represented uh, when I go other places, man, because a lot of people always, you know, relate to it. They're like, oh, I love New Orleans. Yeah, New Orleans. yeah, yeah. You know, they're best city. So, you know, it's cool, man. I love it. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Hey, I mean, you got to love your hometown, man. No, anyway, because of the simple fact that, like, that's where your heritage is. That's where your culture is from. You know what I'm saying? And 
any and everything that built you and made you a man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, that's what them footprints lie. You hear me? So I'm with you. That's what's up. So, um, I mean, we all know, man, like real talk, it, it ain't easy being black in America, man. Like coming from a city, man, where they consider the bottoms though. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What brought you to say, you know, fuck this, man. I got to get up out of here and do something different. Or was you just like out here doing your football thing and, and just got, got seen because you was just that cold? Or I mean, like, was you just making up in your mind, like, this ain't going to end well if I stick around? You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, man. You, you know what? I, I've been through so much, man, um, you, you know, as a kid. And, uh, you know, you hear the norms about when people come back to their city, you know, yeah, you know, a lot yeah. of people, they envy, you know, they, they envy those superstars and those famous people. So you have to do things different, right? You have to be able to move on the outskirts. You know, you can't okay. you, 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 you okay. can't be in there, right? If you're fully right. in there, then, you know, that's you taking chances on your fucking life. I'm, I'm yeah, being honest with you. Yeah. So, 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 so being able to move around the outskirts is what you got to do. Um, but you also also have to be mindful of the way you at too right um right right so like i said i just handle my business from the outside man and, and i still give back to the community i still do things and get involved with the kids and uh you know that's what it's about for me man you know making yeah. sure the kids have yeah. i didn't endure my time i didn't have my time as a kid playing and it, it's time to give back you know and support the young ones that's what's up man and i agree with that 190 percent, bro because as black men you know i know like i'm a little bit older than you i know you're like 30 31 you know what i'm saying i'm 43 man and it's like as black men, we got to take ownership and being mm -hmm. leaders for the people that actually matter, which is the kids in the community, not, not the adults, not the, the chick around the corner that, that crochet and make blankets and shit. Now I'm talking about like, <laughs> like little homie around the corner, man, that, that need to hear every day, man. You look good out there on that field, boy. Keep that shit up. You know what I'm saying? There you like, go. There hey, you that, go. that's where the strength in numbers lie. You know what I'm saying? Go, Be, being able to focus, man. That's 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 awesome, man. That's awesome. So, being from New Orleans, though, I know it's a whole lot of my listeners, man. Even myself, that's gonna want you to answer this question, man. And mm -hmm. you got to tell us, bro, like. What's the best damn strip club out there, man? Like I be wanting to go and shit. I'll be like, damn, like what like what we gonna do? You know? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, um man, I'm gonna be I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. You know, I only I, I never been to a strip club in New Orleans, man. Wow. Um, um, oh, I, I can say it's on Bourbon Street, but, you know, I, I got caught up into something and I, I was able to go in. But I, I'm not a big fan of strip clubs. I, I don't do that, man. That's okay. not uh, that's okay. not my forte, man. So but, okay. you know, they have they have a uh, ace, ace of spades. Um, I mean, you got like I said, they have a whole bunch of strip clubs on Bourbon Street, like the cabaret. Yeah. Um, they have she she's out in New Orleans East. Uh, you know, you have visions. Visions. OK, Club I, on I know. Vision, so, you know, they yeah. got places. They got places. man. But That's not my forte, man. I stay out of that. That's what's up, man. Shit, I watched that show P Valley, man, and I had to ask shit. It, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no question about that. I, I watched that motherfucker. I'm like, I need to do a strip club tour. This month, you know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, they got some they got some hot shit, man. But you know, it's 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 for those people who, who enjoy that shit, man. Yeah, that yeah. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. So um I got a quote, man, the other day. Uh, off your timeline, man. It's it's pinned to your um, it's pinned to your profile. Mm -hmm. Um, that that quote, man. Hey, it it touch a lot of levels. You hear what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. it's it's beneficial right now for what's happening in society and our world and the way things are going. Not necessarily just. I know the quote came from the things that you've been through in your life, but mm -hmm. sometimes people really don't understand that 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 clairvoyance. That, that moment of clarity that you take for yourself sometimes can shine that exact same light on a crowd of people that's been looking and been hoping and trying to figure the shit out the same way you have. You know what I'm saying? So I peeped that quote, and the quote was, greatness don't happen overnight. It only happens in the midst of adverse situations. Like, hey, that's some real ass shit. Because all this change, all this shit that's happening right now, man, all the things that's been going on in our society right now, this is the biggest adverse situation that people will ever have to deal with in their lifetime. 2020 came, dog, and it ain't even over yet. You hear me? Tell me. <clears throat> All right, so I respect that quote, man. I respect that shit to the fullest because a lot of people need to hear that, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, Absolutely. And, and even if they don't understand, dissect it for yourself. Do your own research Absolutely. and figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Like, Absolutely, real, real man. <clears throat> real talk. That, man. Yeah. Okay, so what I want to do now, man, is... um. 
knowing that, I mean, before before I take my first break here, because the breaks be about a minute long or whatever, but you ain't got to worry about that part. But it's <laughs> like, it's like, yeah. um, it's like just speaking about adversity and the things that has occurred. Let's go ahead and break this shit down, man. Cause I know it's a lot of I know it's a lot of listeners and stuff that know Delvin, bro. They know what you've been through. They know everything that's been going on. Um, they know you had a serious injury in high school. You sat still for six years, you know what I'm saying? And people have to understand that when it ain't God's will, you know what I'm saying? When God make the rules, you just gotta abide by the things that's gonna occur. And he didn't wanna see your life flipped upside down like that. You know what I'm saying? So do 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 me the favor of running through it, man. Just just tell my listeners what happened to you, man. From your words, from your heart, your side of the story. Tell me exactly, you know, what you went through, homie. Yeah, man. Um, so it was uh, October uh, 27, 2006, man. Uh, it was two days after my 17th birthday, man. Um, you know, everything was normal, man. You know, um, you know, I woke up that morning listening to uh, uh, Ain't Nothing But a Gangster Party by Tupac. You hear me? Man, my dad, you hear me? <laughs> no, man, my dad had that thing booming, man. Yeah, like, yeah. that's when we woke up to, bro. It was like 7 o'clock, man. Um, so we woke up, man. It was a normal day. I slept good, everything, man. So uh, leading to the game, uh, we was on kickoff. Uh, going on a kickoff, coming after halftime, man. And, uh, you know, uh, my best friend at the time, Carl Cobbins and Lenerick, was like, uh, they said, I bet you ain't going to go make this play. And I'm like, shit, they got LSU scouts in the stadium. I'm like, man, I'm about to, you know, hey, I, I said, yeah, all right, man, I'm about to go make this play in my mind. I'm like, oh, this me all day. Oh, uh, his so, stick. Man, <laughs> and, 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 absolutely. Look, that's what I'm <laughs> I look at it, I'm like, bet, I'm about to bet you. Yeah. Okay, bet. So they kick that bitch off, man. And, man, I'm, I'm hauling out there, bro. I'm hauling ass down the field. I'm running. Like, I ain't thinking about nothing, bro. My mind's silent. All I'm thinking about is this fucking, I'm about to go smash whoever about to get this fucking ball. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? That's just me thinking as I'm fucking running. I'm like, man, fuck it. It's silence. I don't hear anything out there, bro. Everything is just it's in my mind. Everything is in my mind. So I shot down that bro. B20, 17 yard line. By the 17 yard line, you know, the guy was running and he was, you know, going left. His knee, as his knee was running up, bro, I dove in there from the side. I dove uh, in and my, my helmet caught his knee. As his knee was coming feet. up, my fucking, I left my feet. Oh, I dove. Man. So my neck, when his knee hit my neck, it jerked back. And next thing you know, bro, I fucking rolled over. Everything just went dark. Damn. Everything. Damn. You know what I'm saying, man? Everything Damn. just went dark, man. And uh, as you can see on the film, I don't know if you saw the high, uh, the tape I've been posting, but they have the actual hit on there. Yeah, um, You it. see, I wasn't moving, man. Once I made the hit, bro, I rolled. I wasn't moving. Yeah. If you pay attention, if you watch close, I wasn't moving, man. Yeah. And, um, you know, everything just went dark. So in that moment, I'm hearing my teammates like, hey, D-Bro, D-Bro, get up. We need you. We need you. And I'm like... I'm trying, but I can't move. But mind you, that that's my subconscious talking. So I'm, yeah. I'm like, I'm trying, but I, I, I they can't hear me. You yeah. feel me? So I just yeah. hear their words just going drowning out, bro. Like their words, like, hey, D bro, D bro, we need you, we need, and everything's just drowning out, bro. Next yeah. thing you know, a bright white light disappear, bro. Um, wow. it, it's something I can't, it's something I can't fucking explain. But I, I, the, the best way I can explain it is, um, I don't know if you ever seen Bruce Almighty. Uh, when, when Morgan Freeman was the, he was yeah. the god, and he was, uh, he took Jim in there, and uh, but the room, and was the room was, was all just, white, yeah, yes. that light was that's what, that's all, that's all I can remember. That's all how I can explain. It was just wow. a bright white light, man. And with, within a few seconds, bro, my my coaches came with a smelling soap, and it was like, you all right? I said, yeah. It was like, all right, well, let's get up and move. Let's get up. So right. I'm like, all right, shit. Got up off the field, bro. My own power, man. Took my own helmet off and, you know, walked off the field, man. Right. That's what's up, man. So so when it was all said and done, you know, um, that smelling sauce, man, that was God, man. God caught you. You know what I'm saying? He laid the hand Absolutely. out. It's like, not yet. Like, not yeah. yet. You know what I'm saying? And that's, hey, that's awesome, man. man. See, and that's what you call overcoming adversity, man, because it was a mishap. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It wasn't a situation that you planned. It wasn't nothing that was supposed to happen. It just happened. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, that's what's up, man. Hey, that's love right there. So, behind that, it was a six-year hiatus, okay? Mm -hmm. um, you missed college simply mm -hmm. because you were trying to get everything back together. Like, you got to build confidence. You got to build strength and mobility. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, what was going through your mind at that time? Like, was you thinking in your mind the whole time, like, damn, I'm just glad to be alive? Or was you thinking, like, shit, I got to get back on the field, though? Yeah, fuck that, man. I, uh, uh, my doctor, whenever I got to the um, um, to get discharged, man, I asked my doctor, is football ever going to be for me? You know, is yeah. this football over with? 
he walked out and was like, man, send me Super Bowl tickets when you make it to the Super Bowl. Ah, shit. That's all. Hey. Right. As a 17 year old kid, I'm like, man, this, man that's some strong ass words. So my Remember mind, me? Flipped, like, I still got a chance. I, I got hope. Damn. You hear me? I got hope. So when he told wow. me that, and that's the doctor who fixed my neck, man. Wow, man. Me? So so I just been thinking, I'm like, man, fuck that. I'm going to play ball. I'm, I, look, I'm going to do whatever I got to do to play ball. Hey, that's big. And I've been training and working, man. You know, wow. so. Um, that's yeah, big. It, it was right. Second chances, man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, real talk, man. That type of shit alleviate a lot of pressure, you know? Hey, Absolutely. That's that's what's up, man. You know, like I said, I played ball all my life, man. Um, I messed around and stopped playing ball in college because I chose the streets. Like, I was always in the streets, and I let that go. So college wasn't for me either. I mean, I wound up getting my degree and all that kind of stuff, but playing ball in school, it just it didn't happen. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I found my wife in college and – started doing some whole other shit, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, my, my life changed. So feeling where you coming from, man, that six years, it was it was a, a glass ceiling, man. Shit was boundless. It, it wasn't no chains. It wasn't no attachments. Um, <clears throat> it wasn't nothing to hold you back because eventually you ended up playing ball anyway. You know what I'm saying? For a smaller time, for a small amount of time, for a smaller type team. Go ahead and explain to mm -hmm. them, you know, what your next phase was. Yeah, man. So, uh, just I, I, and I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna keep it a fucking bug with you. So, so even through the through through the six years, man, I had some issues too. Right? I was battling, you know, depression. I was battling yeah. anxiety. I was battling mental. You gotta mental, protect your mental uh, awareness. Health. I, I, mm -hmm. I was fucked up, man. You know, I was going in these dark spaces, man. So I tried to commit suicide twice. Wow. Um, wow. Uh, one in '09 and one in 2010. You know, try to OD off of pills, and then the next year I try to hang myself just because. I feel like I didn't have a purpose. You feel me? I, I was just living fucking life. I'm just walking right. around drinking all fucking days, seven days a week, bro. I'm supposed to be in school, nigga. Like, I'm supposed to be in school. I'm fucking, I, I'm out partying, dog. I'm up yeah. to the crack of dawn. I'm, yeah. I'm not giving a fuck about life because football was the only thing that really mattered to me. Wow. And uh, so so I was going through that shit. And, uh, you know, uh, my boy, one of my best friends now, you know, I call him my brother. Uh, he's he's uh, Alex. We call him Pee Wee. Uh, he reached out to me. Uh, we was playing flag football. I caught four picks in one flag football game. This man said, bro, you don't belong out here. You yeah. need to be playing somewhere. So yeah. he, he gave me that spark. Right? He, he's like, man, go try out for uh, New Orleans Voodoo, which was an arena team. Yeah. And I was like, man, just give me a year. <clears throat> so that year, I prepped uh, going to play with a semi-pro team uh, with Louisiana Bayou Vipers uh, out in Hammond, man. So shout out to Coach Ryan, Coach Waddell, Miss Mo. Um, they gave me an opportunity, man. And uh, yeah. I, I took the best of it, man, and I made some shit happen. That's what's up, man. So like I always say in all my podcasts, he just proved it to you, man. It's love out here. You dig? Like, it's people out here that don't give up on you, man. It's just a matter of how you present yourself and, and how bad you want. You know what I'm saying? Like, none of that victim shit standing around talking about what you could have did or that, that, there that, you go. that there jail you go. talk, you know what I'm saying, what you should have been. You. Fuck that, man. Like, hey, make there it happen. Go. Make it happen. Look, and, that, and that's what stuck with me, right? Like, because I always hear people like them old heads, like, oh, I could have been this. Or my dad, per se. Oh, man, I would have been the best. Girl. Ah, why, why the fuck you wasn't? Right. Or, or, or old heads, like, oh, man, I, in high school, I was this cat. If I yeah. would have did this, if yeah. I would have went, well, fuck that. Yeah. I don't want to hear that. I don't, I don't want that. <laughs> I'm with that. Say, I, don't, I don't want that to be my fucking excuses when I'm telling my fucking son. Oh, yeah. man, son, I could if I wouldn't have broke my neck, I could have been. No, fuck that. I'm going to show him that I am a fucking badass. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. You proved it to me. I ain't bullshitting at all. You hear me? Like, and I'm and I'm one of the tough guys. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I got a high tolerance for pain, man. I can show you. I just had surgery on on both my hands. If you can see, you know what I'm damn. saying? Like they, I yeah, got damn. both of them, and I'm still out there running my lawn care service and doing the stuff that I need to do. Doctor, like you need to sit still. I'm like, I need to make paper. I got a family yeah, at the crib. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, come on, hey, come on. But, but that's what it is. So I never got an opportunity to make it. Mm -hmm. As far as like going to school and accomplishing that that short term goal of being the best in college and then entering that long term goal on the NFL and things like that. Of course, that's mm -hmm. that's what we all have on our mind when we put that helmet on for the first time. You know what I'm saying? So uh, tell me, man, like what it feel like, bro? Like what was that feeling? You hear me? Like, like what can you gauge or match that feeling to when you got that phone call from the Saints? Man, listen to me, man. I, man, I, I fucking cried, man. Um, yeah, I was in Tampa Bay, man. I was working out with um, 
So I had buku fucking workouts, man. I was working. I was flying left and right, bro. I had 28 of the 32 teams wanted to work me out. So I'm right. I'm flying from city to city for city yeah. to city. And then yeah. I get to Tampa. And Tampa, you know, work after I get done working out with Tampa, I had to get a phone call from the Saints, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was a Terry Fontenot on the call, the scouting director. He was like, hey, man, who, who, what workout you got coming up next? You know, just trying to be casually, you know, just trying to have conversation. I said, man, shit, I'm going to Atlanta. I got Atlanta. I'm about to get on the flight. We got to go to Atlanta. He said, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is there any way we can, we can get you in before Atlanta? Oh, shit. Like, oh, shit, yeah. Like, like, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I told my agent, my agent, like, shit, we're going to fly down there tomorrow. We can get the workout in with the Saints. You know, you can bring your, your, your uh, my fiance at the time. You can bring her in, whatever, with the woo. Yeah. I said, I right, bet. Man, went in that workout, <laughs> man, uh, dominated that shit. My, my proudest moment came. I'm not even going to fucking say when I signed with the Saints, though, because that wasn't even – my proudest moment came when I walked into that locker room and I saw my fucking bro jersey, bro, my name on the wow. back of the Saints, bro. Hey, that's what's up. And I, bro, I went pick that bitch up. I started crying, bro. Yeah, I, 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 man. I fucking did it. I did it, man. Nobody man. can tell me I can't. And now it's time to go play ball. And I had to fucking yeah. check DeAndre Hop. I had to check D-Hop, bro. <laughs> like right out the gate. You hear me? Like, like right Damn. out the gate. <laughs> Right out there. good. That motherfucker's good. I'm like, yeah. damn. Uh, and I go down uh, so, you know, it, it was a great game. It was a great moment for me, a great feeling, man. Um, and also, you know, I cried when I came out the tunnel. They called my name on an announcement, uh, on an announcement. you know, Delvin, bro, from New Orleans, Louisiana, hey, from McDonald's 35 Senior High. I, I, I couldn't do nothing but cry. I was like, bro, this, I, as this you should have, man. Like, hey, bro, man, if I was in the room with you, bro, and they called your name and you didn't cry, I'd kicked you in the nuts. I'd be like, yeah, what the hell is wrong with you, nigga? You finna be rich? Are you crazy? <laughs> Talk, yeah, man. Man. Hey. hey, that's the love, nope, nope. man. That's the love, man. So, all right, hey, hold on, man. Hey, hey let, let's let's take a quick break, man. We'll we'll be back in a second, man. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, I I this real talk right here. This real talk. Down, levitate, going up, elevate. Watch me demonstrate. On time, never late. I grind, celebrate. No pump fake, hesitate. I've been scoring every day. Champagne Perrier. Since nine three, been in the box. Now I'm stepping up to home. Like straight out the sand lot. Now I'm plotting on the globe. I work hard. I show love. Uh, hey, ex NFL player for the New Orleans Saints. Currently playing in the CFL right now. Uh, highest paid cornerback in the Canadian Football League. Right now, we talking, man. We chopping it up. We trying to uh, get to the to the money part of the story right here, man. Um, so, when you got signed with the Saints, mm -hmm. everything was good, though. Like, you was balling. Mm -hmm. um, you was doing your thing. You know what I'm saying? You, you was locking a few of them down. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh -huh. I, remember seeing, I remember seeing your name in the news a couple times. You know what I'm saying? Some key interceptions and shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, Life was good. But then all of a fucking sudden, just out the blue, out of nowhere, another injury occurs. Mm -hmm. um, from my understanding, somewhere in the mix of all of this shit came a false injury report. Mm -hmm. And behind that false injury report, standing strong, was old fucking Sean Payton, old Coach Payton. I won't say much about the dude because I don't know him. I wasn't around. I don't talk about people behind their back. I'm not that type of man. You know what I'm saying? But Absolutely. since we do have you here, mm -hmm. tell us your side of that story, man. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, there you go. What the fuck? That, <laughs> man. man, that shit, duh, bro. That, that, that's something, man. You know, just that time for me, man, was, uh, was rough, man, because, uh, you know, after coming off that 2015 season, man, you know, Coach Payton, bro, we was at a fucking Christmas gathering, man. And uh, I, I kid you not, I, I, me, my ex-wife, his girlfriend at the time, and him, we all took a picture in a photo booth. Yeah. And right, right after that, he looked at me and was like, "Hey, Dem, you about to be a, you, you gonna, we gonna pay you, we gonna be, you gonna be a 20 million dollar cornerback in this fucking league with us, man. We're gonna pay you big next year." Right. You have to continue to keep balling, keep staying healthy. And that was 2015 Christmas party. I'm like, man, and my wife said, my ex-wife, now she was sitting right there listening. So we, yeah. you know, we, so going into to 2016 season, that's where all the shit started. You know, I, I broke my fibula uh, against yeah. the Raiders, right? And, 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 you know, he came to the sideline, pissed off at me, like, oh, you going to quit on your team and all that shit. And yes. I'm some, I knew, I, yeah, listen to me. I knew something was really wrong with me, right, bro? So uh, I went back and played, you know, four plays, but I went to play, the Oakland Raiders game, 2016. Mm -hmm. If you go back and watch the tape, I played four snaps on a broken leg 
Um, wow. Because Coach Payton, you know, it was all the bullshit. Oh, you going to quit on your team? Like, come on, Brandon Cook score. That was right after Brandon Cook scored that long-ass touchdown. In yeah. 2006, the Oakland Raiders, he scored a long touchdown. He, Coach Payton going to come over like, come on, are you going to quit? Are you quitting on your team? I'm like, man, fuck it, man. Fuck, I know something wrong with me, dog. Like, I even took more pills, dog. Uh, I took more time. Man, time. why they do that all the time? I took even I took more pills just to be like, fuck it. I ain't gonna quit on my team. You know what? Yeah. I know something wrong with me, but I'm gonna take these tortoise pills. That's what they were. Tortoise yeah, pills. Yeah, they like tortoise. Yeah. So I took two. I took two before the game, and I took two more at half when I knew somehow. I took two more just because I was like, fuck it. I'm, I'm gonna try to play. So I put my put back on my helmet, went out there, bro. I played four plays after on a broken leg. I went out, right? I'm done. Mm -hmm. I, I was done in the third quarter, beginning of the third quarter, didn't finish the game, come to find out my leg was broken. I didn't get no apology from Coach wow. I didn't get no nothing from it, bro. That's you feel me? Man. So, so okay, so boom, all right, fuck it. 2017, come, you know, they put me on IR, you know, I come back and play or whatever. So 2017, come, I'm back healthy, I'm back ready to roll, I'm killing in fucking training camp, bro, I'm dominating. Yeah. Third day come, I get hit in the knee, bow. Uh, I mean, I get hit in the same uh, same fibula by uh, Joseph Morgan. I get yeah. hit in the bow. Next thing you know, my fucking leg broke again. Mind you, uh -huh. now they told me they told me it was a bone contusion, right? Mind you, I didn't even see the fucking X-rays. Yeah, I didn't see. I, I went took the X-ray, but I never saw the results. They never they, showed me the results. They didn't want to scare you. That's all exactly. that shit was. Never saw the results. So the next thing you know, I'm being told it's just a bone contusion, bro. So now we in treatment session say, oh, it's a hematoma, which is a bone contusion. Oh, it's a hematoma. That's what they try to keep using. And yeah. Coach Payton was like, well, why, why, why the fuck you not out here practicing? If it's just a bone contusion, you can come back and play. I said, I don't, Coach. If a, I can play through a fucking bone contusion. I can practice through a bone contusion. Right. I know that. Yeah. I know what a bone contusion feel like, dog. Yeah. You feel me? I know what that shit feel like. Yeah. But yeah. it felt like when I broke my leg in 2016, it felt the same way when the dude hit me. I said, damn, something wrong. I know something wrong. But they didn't yeah. believe me. So days going by, you know, I'm, I'm coming to work and shit like that. You know, that, now I'm starting to feel the heat. You know, um, you know, I'm, I'm going out to practice one day. I'm talking to Marshawn Lattimore, you know, just trying to give him some tips and shit. He, Coach Payton comes walk over and, you know, he's like, look at this guy. He don't even want to practice. I'm like, why, why would you, why are you fucking with me, dog? Yeah. Like, like, and that was the start. I said, he was like, you know what? I can trade you. You know that, right? You know, I can trade you. Just out of nowhere, bro. I'm like. Wow, that's fucked up. Are you kidding? The, right. So I, I'm like, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it, man. I'm going to walk back to the training room. Bro, I just walked out that man face and I, I went back to the training room. You know, a couple more days go by. My legs still fucking with me. They're still fucking with me. So he comes in there like, uh, uh, he was like, well, what's, when, when's he going to be ready? Yeah. I like, who the fuck is he? You yeah. feel me? Like, now nah, you did. Come on, bro. Yeah, that's fucked up. In front man. of my teammates, like, when is he gonna be ready? And I'm like, man, dog, it's something wrong with my leg, man. Yeah. So the trainer Bo, so the trainer Bo is like, hey, uh, Coach Payton, he's getting there. You know, it's it's, it's on him. Like y'all saying it's a bone contusion, but it's on him. If he's not ready, I mean, we what can we do? Yeah. So he gonna tell me, you know what? And then Bo, the trainer's like, hey, we gonna he gonna go on the field today. We're gonna do it. He said, you know what? I don't want to see his face. Go go let him work out in the bubble in, in the indoor facility. I don't want to see his face out there. Go go make let make it make him go in the bubble. Uh, that's what he gonna go. I'm like, so that's how we doing the game, dog. Right. My my teammates like my teammates like, bro, why is he so mad at you? I'm like, I don't fucking know. But like 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 he was like, well, you okay? Fuck no, I ain't okay, man. Yeah, Would you be okay if a coach keep fucking hounding you over something that you can't control? <clears throat> I, they tell him he's a bone. Okay, well, why the shit ain't work? Why my leg is still hurting, dog? Yeah. Why? Yeah. They ain't show me no x ray so I'm just thinking, like, well, something, something got to be wrong, bro. Yeah. So we going into these meetings now, right? We, we practicing at the, um, at the, at the end of um, – we practicing um, at, on airline because uh, they, they got rid of the, the Green Bay, whatever that shit. We used to go to uh, – what that shit is? West Virginia, Greenbrier, Greenbrier, Greenbrier. We used to go out there to Greenbrier and practice. Okay. So now we ain't there no more. So now yeah. we having meetings at the, at the Hilton Hotel in Kenner off airline, and uh, we go in the meeting. He's like uh, – well, well, my doctor's saying uh, 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 it's just a bone contusion, man. It's been almost a week and a half. Like, what's going on? You just don't want practice or nothing? I said, Coach, something is wrong with me, dog. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Like, it's, he said, he bangs on the table. Call me, man, one more time. I said, and what you going to do? <laughs> like, like, what you going to do? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's crazy, bro. Like, they be like, thinking, you. man. Mm. So I, I'm sitting in there like, like, dog, what's wrong with you? Like, what's wrong with you, man? Like, what you, what you all hostile? Like you? Oh, I'm gonna trade you to Dallas. You know what? I'm gonna get on the phone with Jerry Jones and I'm gonna trade you. I said, man, trade me to Dallas. Dallas beautiful too, and yeah. I'm gonna go be an All Pro. You hear me? I told that boy, and I'm gonna go be an All Pro. He gonna look uh, like he was disgusted. Cause <laughs> I, I, what, what could you do? I, I'm hurting, bro. Something is yeah, wrong. I said, you man. know what, coach? I said, you know what? Let me go get a second opinion. 
Yeah. Let me go get my second opinion. Yeah. He said, all right, well, you go get your second opinion. They're going to say the same thing. They're going to, because I trust my doctor. My doctor's the best. Boo, boo, boo. I said, okay, bet. Man, guess what? I went go fucking get my second opinion, dog. These fucking, that man took my extra, put my shot. He said, look, that's the crack. Or you could clearly see the fucking crack in my leg. He going to tell me, man, this shit look like a week old, two week old injury. Wow. That's messed so, up. Well, what they didn't tell me nothing. Well, why the fuck they didn't show me the x-rays, man? And then after after they found, after I went and got my second opinion, then the fucking doctors, Dr. Jones and Dr. Siri gonna put a, oh, come see your x-rays, come see. See, right here, we thought this was something, but it was a, it looked like a ball. What bitch show me? What, what the fuck y'all didn't show me that thing? <laughs> That's messed up, man. That's Next messed up, Next thing you know, man. bro. Next thing you know, Delvin Brew is out the league. Let me tell you some fucked up shit. I ain't playing with the Saints, but they ain't even re-signed me back. And I, you, bro, it, they, why the fuck they fired the doctors, man? They fired all the doctors too. Yeah. Yeah, that's that was something that um yeah, on, they, they knew they was in the wrong behind that. But you know Come what? On. I'll be honest with you, Delvin, man. Like hearing that story, just hearing what you're saying, man, it just really it just really lets me know that these doctors and these these coaches and all that kind of stuff, they don't realize how much trauma and PTSD they putting on these players. Players. And this is how you end up with the junior sales. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm saying? because you constantly diving into this man and, and forcing this man and telling he, he telling him he don't know his body. He don't know what's going on. Like there you go. And you've been working out since you was a kid. It's the same way with me, same way with Kawhi and anybody else. You've been working that same body since you was a child, playing the same exact sport all your life. You know when something ain't right. All right. You know Come on, bro. So Talk to me, yeah, that's something. Knows- yeah, he know that too, bro. And my thing is, you know, he, he we go have a team meet once they fire the Dodgers. You know, you want to go up and there and tell a story about some shit with the 2009 Super Bowl team, man. That shit ain't got nothing to do with me, right? You feel right, me? Right. Oh, you go tell a story about 2009. Well, I'm the fucking person who's going through this shit now. Yeah, Talk, man. T- apologize to me. Listen to me, bro. What fuck <laughs> up is? I didn't get a pot. Listen, the shit happened. I didn't even get an apology until two weeks after they came back from the fucking San Diego Chargers joint practice out there in California, dog. So right. I had to wait with that shit on my fucking mind, dog. Yeah, for two man. weeks, bro. Yeah, That's bullshit, bro. Yeah, That's see, bull- it's that it's that stress and that weight. You hear me? That's that's the shit that make everything all bad, and it's the reason why so many players end up you know, drinking or doing dope or killing themselves or, you know what I'm I saying? I started drinking more. I started drinking, bro. I used to, bro, I, start, I, bro, I got bad, bro. I started drinking yeah. and drive. I started doing some fucked up shit because I didn't know where my mind, I didn't know where my career was going to go. Yeah. I just know every day I come to practice, I'm getting harassed and I'm getting told what, what, the, what the fuck ain't wrong with my body. I know what's wrong with my body. Yeah. Y'all telling me, oh, no, I ain't, ain't nothing wrong with your body. I, I know what's wrong with my body. Something yeah. ain't right, man. That's listen to the up, fucking man. player. Listen to the player. You have to. You have to listen to the player because that is, even though you're a product of their business, you still have to keep that product up to standard. You know what I'm saying? Period. Listen like, to me, man. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Oh, it ain't Coach Payton's fault because he was told by the doctors, no, fuck y'all. Fuck whoever said it ain't right. his fault. That's the fucking, because it ain't about the damn doctor. It's about them fucking meetings we was having yeah. behind them fucking closed doors where I'm having problems with. That yeah. man ain't good, bro. That's yeah. a fucked up human being, bro. That's wrong, man. Yeah. And then yeah. you can't sit up in the politics. That's wrong, bro. I agree. You can send me out to this fucking world being fucking traumatized, knowing, knowing I knew it was fucking wrong, my lady, but you ain't fucking telling me? That's yeah. wrong, man. Yeah, I agree. You gonna come with some bullshit as apology, bro. And then next thing, I don't even get, I don't even get a chance. Yeah. Yep, because that hey, you know them you know them coaches run in circles. Hell, I coached yeah, for twelve yeah. years. I coached for twelve years, bro. AAU athletics all the way up until the kids was able to get to college, and we have our circles. And if you have that one kid that you constantly got to discipline all the time, and you constantly got to deal with, and their parents and all of that, that shit travels in that coaching circle. Everybody know it. So if he considered you to be a problem and wanted to ruin your career. He could talk to Jerry Jones and and this man, man and Andy Reid. You. you know, hear what man, I'm, I'm saying? About to say, so, John Elway, listen to me, bro. I was at Denver, dog. You know, I had a few months been passed by. Denver Broncos reached out to my agency, bro. They was like, hey, look, man, we want Delvin to come in. We're going to sign him. Listen to me, bro. I had a fucking contract. Three years, 20 million. It was three years, 20, 20.5 million, 5 million guaranteed with 1.5 million signing bonus. I had that bitch on the table. I passed the physical. Yeah. I passed everything, bro. Yeah. I'm five minutes, I'm five minutes away from fucking signing, bro. John Elway shook my hand. Hey, welcome to the team. Everything. Yeah. They, why the fuck they pulled that whole contract, bro? <sighs> Talking to the wrong people at the right time, man. That's just on, that, that's, that's that bullshit, man. But you know so what? That, yeah, I mean, and it sucks, man. But you know what? Hey, God closed windows, open doors. You already know how that shit works. That's bro. it. So, 
You over in Canada doing what you do in a safer environment. You ain't got to deal with this presidential bullshit we got going on, man. Like, believe it or not, man, your light shining way brighter than some eyes over here. So, <laughs> so you, you, you just be thankful and be happy that you ain't got to deal with some of this old weirdness that we walking around in every fucking day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, no, it's crazy. It's the same shit here too, bro. It ain't, you know, it ain't all sweet here neither, man. Canada is beautiful, but they have their picks. You know, yeah. you have their people that you have that, bro. It's everywhere, right? Race yeah. is everywhere man yeah you can't, racism ain't dead um but 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 like like i said bro you just have to watch how you move you know um and, and when people do fucked up shit you you know i, I learned how to cope man i learned some coping yeah. skills that helped me you know stop being just impulsive at people bro like because I, yeah. I, I snap yeah. real quick though I'm, I'm a snapper bro i'm gonna you tell me so i'm fucking coming I'm, and i don't and when i snap i'm <laughs> yeah. so you know it's something that I have to learn, and, and and like I said, it's everywhere, man. I got my son. I got a three year old son. That I got to take care of, bro. Yeah. So you know, it's 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 tough. You know, That's it's tough up. out here. But That's what's up. But we, we got to mind, mind. We got to mind where we be at. Like I said, you got to move. You got to move quiet. You got to move. You know, on the yeah. outskirts. Okay. So all right. Well, let let's switch gears a little bit here. All right. So the NFL is done. All right. You done moved on. You're in Canada. You're in the CFL. All right. One of the best. You done made your you done made your accolades, you done got your trophies. Um, now you're getting the money. You hear me? You're the highest paid out there. Tell me, man, what's the dumbest shit you done spent some money on since you ain't getting paid? Like, um, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you look at it and be like, man, oh, what the hell is I even tripping off? Why about that? You know? <laughs> man, you see, bro, I see a lot of people don't know me, man. Um, yeah. you know, I'm a saver, man. Um, I, I learned back in 2009 when I got evicted out of my apartment, you know, okay. just spending okay. money on TV. But now, bro, I'm, I'm actually invested in myself, man. I, I put money to the side, man. Um, I don't just go buying on dumb shit like I used to. Uh, um, um you know, I, I, I invest in my son too, man. Y'all have a little yeah, trust fund yeah. for him, so I put money to the side for him. But I, I, I don't buy nothing stupid, bro. I buy what, what, what's what I want and what I need, man. You that's know, necessity up. guy, man. I don't, I don't be buying all the chains and the jewelry. I, yeah. That's not me. I'm not into all that shit, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm really a laid back cat, bro. Like yeah. if you, that's why a lot of people don't know too much because I don't, I don't, I be chilling, dog. Like yeah. I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't you like all that shit, bro. Yeah, you ain't got to be loud and boisterous to to be yeah, heard or be seen. So that's there what's up. Go. Yeah, hey, but that's what's up, man. Like it's good to be responsible with your paper, though, especially in this day and age. That's there you go. That's the honest to God truth, man. So. Um, all right. So let's say, um, let's say, let's say we head back to, uh, New Orleans. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So say we back at the crib. Um, I know when Hurricane Katrina came around, you was probably like maybe 15, 16, somewhere around there, you know, in high school. So over all this time, they done rebuilt the city. They didn't, they didn't added some stuff. They didn't clint some things up and made stuff more desirable and more attractive. So say it's today and me and my wife, me and my wife in the touchdown in New Orleans and you and your wife as our guides. What we eat, what we eating that cuz of where we going, man. man what, what absolutely. Do, man? <laughs> I'm going I'm gonna give a shout out to my my brother, my guy, uh, Larry Murrows, man. I got a uh, Murrows restaurant down there, man. It's it's the bomb, dog. Like, you know, I I I order out from there, man. I go eating all the time, okay. man. Uh, it, okay. it's black on restaurant. Black on restaurant, uh, yeah. my, my God, Morros, man, it, it's dope, man. I love supporting my own, yeah. uh, my own people, man, and um, you know that that's why I would suggest you go there. Uh, you go to um, Little Dizzy's, man. Little Dizzy's, uh, it's, a, it's a brunch spot on Sundays, okay. man. They, bro, but, okay. but, but listen, they, they still go during the week, but you got to go on Sundays. It, bro, okay. It's another black owned spot, man, and it's fucking, bro, it's off the chain, man. man. Um, you got you got you me know. ready to uh, pay for no, some it's tickets. Off the chain, <laughs> man. Got some, you know, I'm, I'm being a hundred though, man. Yeah. It's, uh, like I said, I love supporting my own because they know how to put that that foot in that fucking food. You hear me? Yeah. They 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 know how to cook, man. They they yeah. they do their thing, man. They do their thing. So, uh, yeah. like I said, I just love supporting that. that that's why I would suggest, man. More rules, uh, you go to Little Dizzy. Okay, okay, that's what's up, man. Yeah, that's, that's what's up, man. We're always trying to eat, and we're always trying to kick it when we go on our little vacations and all that. Cause um, oh, oh, walk on, man, walk on sports, uh, sports, but if you want to catch the game and shit like that, uh, you know they okay, got TVs okay. everywhere. Y'all can, you know, and that's a little chill spot too, right? It's, uh, called okay. walk ons, man. You know, it's it's pretty dope, man. Um, you know, it's it's pretty dope. Yeah, that's what's up, man. I'm glad I'm hearing all of this, bro, because something's gonna happen. I know I'm finna go to the Smoky Mountains next month. For about a, for about a week, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah, uh, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna kick it out that way out near uh, Gatlinburg and Pigeon Fort and shit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, 
But like, that's what's up. Big, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I spent, I, I spent a little bit of money on this one. You ain't never hey, lie. <laughs> you deserve it, though, man. Yeah, Shit, you yeah. deserve it living in the world we're living in, man. You better yeah. go enjoy your damn life, man. Yeah, this enjoy act- that motherfucker, man. Yeah, actually, it's, it's me and my wife's 20th anniversary, so we finna... Oh, what? Yeah. Congrats, man. Yeah. Congrats, congrats. Yeah, that's love. I appreciate that, man. All right, so getting it back into where we at, man, like back to reality, basically. Now, mm-hmm. we, we both know how bad it is in America right now, man. We both know black people being targeted. Um, I mean, it, and it, it ain't no question about that part. Um, we do know it's a lunar race war about the fester up and some shit trying to brew and uh, you hear the words and people uh tone and voices about election day and all it is um it's a lot of uh businesses out here that are suffering and doing business with consequences um tell me i mean like tell me your thoughts bro like like on the whole cap situation like if they just would have if they just would have listened to kaepernick four years ago bro you know what i'm saying and and just heard what he was trying to say about the whole situation that was going on at that time, we wouldn't be all enveloped in this social media, social shit, you know, that's going on and, and all this craziness with the kneeling and, and all that kind of stuff. Like, like what you think, bro? Like, give me, give me, give me the word. Like what, what you think? on um, that? You know what, man, cap cap, man, I've been supporting cap, um, you know, since, since he started that movement. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna keep it a fuck with you. Um, I've been supporting Cap, and if I was to have, you know, been on the sideline with the Saints, I most definitely would have took that knee. That's what's um, up. That's what's up. Because it, it solidifies unity, man. No, we're not disrespecting the flag because I had people, I had my people in, in fought in the armies and the wars and all yeah, that shit. Yeah, man, I, I hell had, yeah. I had people in there as well, man. So my uncle and my cousins, all my cousins are in that motherfucker now. So, and they say that's <laughs> the right thing. It's yeah. Not, it's not a problem because we're trying to solidify unity, man. And, uh, and, and I... The fans you see that's being you know crazy. Those are bigots, man. Those are people that's not that's yeah. not smart to 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 open in their eyes, man. They got to open up their mind and see where we're coming from as humans, bro. Yeah. It's not about the flag. We're not disrespecting the flag at all. It's not even about that, man. Yeah. Um. But but like I said, I I, I supported Cap in, in every way, man. But I, what I'm hoping is for change. I mean, I know it's gonna be yeah. tough because we it's been engraved in this damn America for so long, and and, and like you said, you got your your white supremacists that that's. You know that's higher up, and, and if we step to them, it's like we're challenging their authority, right? Yeah, and and yeah. sometimes that's sometimes it's not that if they open their mind and see, we just trying to ask for change, bro. We just want to be equal. We ain't right. fucking trying to be over y'all. We just want to equality, dog. We yeah. we just want to be we want everything. I want to be able to fucking walk around in the neighborhood without fucking white people looking at me crazy. We I was with that. my ex wife, man. I was with my ex wife, bro, and she was white, man. And the, the looks we fucking got because of, you know, black and white, bro. Like, yeah, I, yeah. that shit, that, bro, that, that, that made me uncomfortable everywhere I went, dog. Cause I'm right. like, bro, I'm just a human being, just like my wife or just like you motherfuckers in yeah, here. Man, so why y'all yeah, looking man. at me so differently, bro? I, I'm cool. J- I got to fucking sit up here and, and play this old, oh, I, I, I'm fine. Oh, we can, I got to play this fucking this role of, of, of something that I'm not to even fucking be included in this society. Hey, fuck that, man. Let me yeah. be me. Just be Why can't I be me, man? That's what I'm saying. Hey, that's so, the love, man. It's tough. Hell yeah, it was hell tough, man. Yeah, bro. And just going through and just going through this right now. Um, you know, I'm I'm trying to do, you know, make movements myself, um, you know, back home in New Orleans as far as trying to get people with more equality, man. Yeah, you know, um yeah. you know, we, we about to start a movement to try to help people uh with, with uh with little small marijuana charges, man. You know, they we got a lot of us us folks, black folks man, locked up in prison because of, for no of reason. marijuana charges for no reason. And you yeah. got guys who, you know, we walking around here smoking that shit left and right and ain't getting fucking caught. I ain't getting touched. Why, 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 and, and what I didn't like about, you know, certain shit was, you know, they, they looked at white people with marijuana as hippies. Yeah. And they look at us and they look at us black people smoking around as thugs and yeah. gangsters. And uh, why, yeah, why? man, say it's that shit. It's the same thing. Now, say I'm that talking, shit. We smoking the same shit. So why I got to be considered a thug and he can be considered a hippie? You hear that, me? Come on, man. But that's only on, because man. that that too, and my mindset too, man, is because and and don't get me wrong, I ain't no black supremacist and all that, where I hate white people and all that shit. Yeah, but, at all. But at I, all. I absolutely know what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. Mm-hmm. And and I just feel like you know a lot of the times, man, white people see the wrong and what's going on with their own type and their own kind, and instead of them shunning them or making them feel bad for who they are, they categorize them: white trash, mm-hmm. hippies. Um, you know, uh, 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 Jews, uh, you know, like, mm-hmm. like they, they give them names, you know what I'm saying? So that way they'll feel comfortable, Com- 
in their, in, their, in their own skin, in their own environment. But it's not the same for us. If you black, you got dark skin, you a nigga. I could be Jamaican, yeah, yeah. I could be Haitian, I could be a dark skinned Brazilian, I can be uh Iraqi or or, or, or um, exactly. you know, I could be anything of anything of, of that descent that has this same beautiful melanin, but you just you, gonna, you just gonna categorize me and make there me be go. a nigga because you know what I'm saying? Like I it's just it's hard to deal with, man, and there's so much truth within it that it, it makes people regurgitate like all the wrong shit because they don't want to scare people and they won't they right. want you know what I'm saying, they won't don't want people feeling like you said, uncomfortable when they're around. You know, but behind closed doors, that was the whole point. Come that was on, that, that was the whole goal. They wanted you uncomfortable. Yes, you know what I'm saying? So it is it's what like, it is, like man. Crazy, man. Yeah, yeah, it's it like crazy, man. Like, how I try to teach my son, you know, man. It's uh, my son, three years old. Like, fuck, why well, I got to teach my son? Hey, you know, just be careful when you move in. Like, what, nigga? Yeah, come on, man. Yeah, yeah, real talk, man. I, I, listen to me. I talk. I talk to my ex-wife, you know, and and we have to have a communication, right? We, me and her, work well with my son, and yeah, you know, yeah. she was like. Well, Delvin, did you get, did you have the talk with your parents growing up about you know being taught how to move around cops and you know watch your car? You, I said, fucking right. Yeah, my parents most definitely told me how to move and, and yes sir, no sir, and, and and stay calm. Don't why I got to be taught that shit, man. Yeah, you don't. But you know what? Here's the whole fact of it all, cuz you ain't getting taught that shit. You're not getting taught that. You're not being told this is what you need to do, nigga. This is what you see when your daddy get pulled over and you in the fucking back seat of the car or on the passenger side of the car as a teenager. You watching what he doing? You got to do that shit, bro. And that's how you. That's you how see you what I'm saying. Yeah, so nah, you ain't teaching me how to do shit. I, this is this is what the the doctors say is hereditary, and you can get mm -hmm. high blood pressure and all that bullshit that they be lying about. So that way you can stay in their <laughs> network and spend their money. And nah, money. bro, oh, yeah. shit. The the hereditary shit is sitting on the passenger side of that seat and learning how not to get shot by this cop right. because you want to make it home safe, and you just watched your daddy go through it the last five or ten times over the last two or three years. So yeah, oh yeah, I, I know what to do. I know where to keep my hands. I know how to talk to this motherfucker because I got to go home today. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro, but my thing, why though, man? Why we got hey. to step in play this old safe role? But when, when I was with my, with my, like I keep going back to my ex-wife because whenever we got in a situation, she can, yeah, and they don't do nothing. But let me, boy, they all down my fucking back. Man, bro, ain't it sad, let man? Talk. I let her talk, dog. I, yeah. Man, I, Man, you telling people something, bro? Because I know, I know the way they're looking at me is ain't, ain't good. Yeah, and you know, and and the last thing I say about this man before we move on, because like I said, I don't want to keep your time. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, the the last thing that I want to say is that a lot of the sisters kind of go crazy when they find out, you know, black men, black stars, all that date white women and all that kind of stuff. I've always looked at it in a sense like, yeah, you love who you love, you date who you date, fuck it, but. Because he go date that white woman, that don't take him away from the fact that he black and he just still got to deal with the same know. bullshit. And just yeah, like know. just like the black women are like, why he dating this white bitch shit? The white women are like, why is he fucking with that nigger? She can find a good, tall, nice, strong white man that plays sports. Like, yeah. it's, it's it's a tit for tat. It ain't, that, that Libra scale ain't going nowhere. It's been standing it's for norm, years. Man. It's a narrative. So, it's a narrative, man. It's all a fucking narrative. We got to change the narrative, dog, because yeah. it's a while I was with my ex-wife, man, they got, I still love my beautiful queen, man. They ain't, I didn't, that didn't take, take away from, you know, uh, me just not loving it. Nah, it's just my situation happened to where I, that's just the situation I was calling. Yeah, but look, yeah. I got divorced in a year and a half, but we got married. I was divorced in a year and a half. I, 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 it just got, <laughs> it just, oh, no, man. I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't <laughs> I need yeah, something like a year and a half. Shit. <laughs> hey, more. You know, because, because my thing was, it was more of a fucking, you know, it was a process for her. her already, her mind was, uh, you know, I want to go and be married by 25, 26, have a kid by 27. You know, I'm like, that's not me. I don't want that shit. Hey, so I got caught up, up in the moment of signing in the NFL. And, you know, I, that shit when I'm up. When, man, you hear me, man? Hey. man I, I signed the contract. I did some shit amazing. <laughs> man, look, what you want to do? You want to get me? What you want to do? You hear me? You <laughs> Look how fast it look how it lasted. I a year I and a half, bro. I, I, I wish I could have been smarter and thought about, you know, um, I could have thought about I wish I'd had some time just to sit back and think because I didn't want to get married. I don't want to get married yet. Hey, man. Me, man. It happened, bro. It just happened. It'd be like the a year and a half, but hey, you hear it here first though, ladies. 
You know what I'm saying? A year and a half, man. My wife done made me throw away drawers older than that. That's just, <laughs> that wasn't no time. We ain't even for the count that man, shit. Let, I'm telling we're, you, bro, we gonna I, let that go. You hear me? I love my queens, though. Like, I love my queens, man. I, 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 I won't, I ain't gonna say, it was, I don't regret anything that happened because my life took me to that point. Um, but I, I, I know better, you know, yeah. um, and, yeah. and I'm, I'm back where I'm back where I'm supposed to be. And like I said, I love all women, man. Fuck that. I love all women, man. That's what's up, yeah, man. I love, <laughs> I'm going to stay single. I'm going to stay single and I'm going to love all women. Yeah. Hey, you hear all. me? Like all right. Okay. So, all right. So here we go, man. Um, I got about four more questions for you. And then, like I said, I'm going to let you go. Cause I, <laughs> I know you got shit to do. You hear me? So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not going to keep you bro. But I think, uh, one thing that that's kind of true to my nature is I'm on Twitter a lot. Um, I do have the Coach Rob account where, you know, I'm a brand ambassador for the Oklahoma City Thunder. And I, you know, I do a lot of stuff with the NBA and I well, not stuff with the NBA, but I do a lot of talking about the NBA and different stuff like that. Uh, football and stuff, too. Um, I spoke to a lot of people, man, and a couple of my, of my homeboys I spoke to, they actually are. Well, not necessarily homeboys, but they are in the NBA. And um, they told me that when they be on Twitter, they read the shit that us fans actually put on Twitter. And mm -hmm. sometimes the negative shit that the fans be saying because they lose a game or because they had a bad day affects the way they feel about playing for that team and playing for that city. And like after a while, they'd be like, man, I don't want to be here. They don't appreciate me, man. Fuck this. I'd rather just go on trade and get on out of there. Like, is that shit true? Like do, do the, do the players like yourself and, and NBA and all that, do y'all really look at the tweets that we be putting out there and you know what I'm saying? Talking um, about the team. Man, I, I can't speak on no other man, but I do though. Man, yeah. You hear me? I, I pay attention to to everything, right? Because it's uh, it, it's what we do. It's the norm. That's society now, man. You go straight to Twitter after a game and see what what CP was saying. So yeah, yeah. we do. Yeah. Um, but as far as uh, wanting to lead a city, I never wanted to lead New Orleans, d d despite you know the way uh, I played a certain game. Because fuck, it's football, man. People make mistakes. Uh, you know, some days you have good games, some days you have bad games. Right. But I, right. I never wanted to lead. I love New Orleans. I wanted to stay with New Orleans for the rest of my life, man. So. I, I, I can't speak on nobody else, but I, I just know for a fact that, man, it don't bother me, man. I actually yeah. love interacting with my fucking fans, man. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Because I tell their ass some shit back. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, well, why you look like that? Like, that? I, man, because that's the fuck. That's how I fucking talk to them. <laughs> oh, man, Lord. If, All right. if you were in the same situation, your ass would have been done the same fucking thing. So no, I, I hate... I, I love it though, bro. I, I, oh I love Lord! It. Look, them, all right, look, all right. Here we go. Uh, NFL version of KD. You gonna have to come. <laughs> I really do love that shit though, man. I hey, but that's what's I, up, I, man. I don't got no burn. Listen, to me. I don't got no burn on card. I, I go straight what it is. Bro. I'm gonna keep it a buck. You hear me? I'm gonna keep so it a buck. Right at him, right? That's what's right up, man. Right I'm gonna hey. let the motherfuckers know I'm here. here. I love that shit. I love that shit, man. Hey, but so all y'all that's listening, man, you heard it here first. Hey, you heard it right here first. The NFL players, even speaking for himself, and like I've told y'all before, they do read those tweets, man. Yep. They do read those tweets. Instagram, messages, everything, bro. We read yeah. it all. I know we do. I'm telling you we do. We yeah. read it all. So whatever you post, trust me, I'm seeing it or somebody, we seeing it. Yeah, that's what time it is, man. All right, so that's what's up, man. So uh, tell me right now, man, like when you, when you out, you chilling, are you working out or, you know what I'm saying? You just relaxing, whatever, man. Like, what's on your playlist right now? Uh, You know what, man? I got a whole mixed, mixed playlist right now, man. I love Rock Wave. I just uh, downloaded that Lil Wayne No Ceilings album. Um, So, you know, I'm a big New Orleans guy, so I got to have my Wayne on there, man. Yeah, I got Lil yeah. Wayne. Um, you know, I got Rock Wave up there, man. Um, I like this play. I just uh, this song I just downloaded called "Viva Love, Viva Love." Something by Coldplay, man. And, and the reason why I love it, man. Um, I had three deaths in the family, and it's something that I um, three deaths in the family in a month, brother, within this month span. And I just wow. downloaded the song. And it kind of just gives me, it gives me some momentum, bro. It, it, it calms me down. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. it's called it's Coldplay "Viva La Vida," something like that by Coldplay. Yeah. Um, it, it's an older song, but it's something that cool. And I have, uh, of course, I have my fucking old soul, my Johnny Taylor, my Mel Waiters. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. I, I go back old school, man. You know, Teddy yeah. Pendergrass. Oh yeah, um, hell yeah, I, hell I, yeah. I'm, a old, I'm an old soul, man. 
Hey, that's what it is. That's what it is. I show just listening to um uh, uh Sunshine today by Alexander O'Neill and uh oh, yeah, I'm yeah, listening yeah, to yeah, Don't yeah, Don't yeah, Disturb yeah. This Groove by the system. Like, hey, I was in this one, I getting yeah. ready, getting ready for your ass. I'm in this motherfucker chilling. You yeah. <laughs> hey, that's talking? What's up. hey, that's what's up, man. But um, okay, so be that the case, man. We see you chilling. You listening to good food and all that stuff. And I mean, listening to good music. And I know New Orleans is known for good food, man, especially seafood and stuff like that. Uh, what would you say is your go-to dish? Like your favorite um, food? Man, I like I like my catfish at Chafalaya or I like my crawfish at Too Faith. Um, okay, okay. That's, that's, and, and my grandma, she did it. My mom, uh, you know, my stepmom, she cooks it well. So that's something I always want when I go back home. Um, you know, it'd be a crawfish at Chafalaya. Um, you can do a crawfish or catfish at Chafala, um, okay. and you can do your crawfish etouffee. That's what's up. That's what's up. Okay, so um, we coming along to the last question. Uh, I was going to play a little bit of uh, this and that with you, but like I say, we're gonna, we'll let that go, man, because I know about your time. But um, we coming on to the last question, and before we do that one, please, like today, I mean, like we're still in the month of September, and this is for the podcasters, and, um, <laughs> and we – with my platform for September, I actually was showing love to the ladies all month. Like, um, mm -hmm. I was doing women wellness. I was doing just any and everything, positivity for women, just everything for women. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. If you don't mind, can you tell the ladies, man, because it's a lot of them that have big aspirations for finding celebs and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> can you tell them, like, if they on the street and they, they run into a celebrity like such as yourself or somebody like that, how should they approach y'all, man, to to come across as the one? You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, me, I'm a genuine soul. So, you know, you, you just got to approach me, you being you. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I want you from the beginning. I, I don't want no fucking... You know, no, no, no pretending. Oh, I'm, I'm nice. This, I'm like, yeah. fuck that. You crazy. <laughs> right. you crazy, show me you crazy. Because I want to know who you are before I even fucking get think yeah, about you. Know, all yeah, yeah. So just be you. Fuck, be you, man. Yeah. You crazy, be crazy. If you drink, drink, motherfucker. You smoke, smoke. I, I, I'm a realist, man. I always keep it real. You know, yeah. I'm, gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you about yourself. You know, if, if you fucking up, I'm gonna be like, hey, man, you gotta fix that shit. Or if you start, if I see you acting crazy, man, look, go back to your old BU. Yeah. Just have fucking fun, BU. That's all. That's what's up. That's what's up. So, so you here, ladies, right here, man. Hey, you trying to chase that type of bag? Hey, approach the situation like yourself. Don't be no character. Don't be no real mm -hmm. housewife from Potomac and Beverly Hills and mm -hmm. shit. Just, just be oh, you. You hear me? You. Hey, you. What's up? Anything positive to say for the ladies, man? Just a positive word for oh, them. Oh man, I, I just want y'all to know, man. We we got a lot of uh, kings out here that that love y'all queens, man. Um, you know, you, you just got to find that right one, man. You know, they, they, we got assholes, but uh, but but Big just know, <laughs> me myself, man. You know, um, I, I love my queens, man. Y'all continue to keep fighting, man. Uh, just know if if you ever come run across me, just know I got your back, man. Um, yeah, yeah. And we gonna go from there, man. Hey, that's big business, man. I hope y'all heard that, man. That's love right there, man. That's that's absolute love out there. Hey, um, so we coming along to the last question, man. And I absolutely want to thank you, bro, for showing love today. Um, hey, man, I was stupid excited about this damn interview, man. I, <laughs> you know, said it. I like this is my second celebrity interview, man, and I can only appreciate y'all time, man. Showing the love, like it ain't too many people that show that kind of love. So before we get into that last question, man, go ahead and tell the people how they can find you. Tell them about your, your uh, clothing brand. Anything you want, man, go on, drop them gems for me. Yeah, man. Um, you can find me on Instagram at uh, broshow40. Um, in my apparel, you can I have a, uh, a link in my bio uh, to where you can go follow my apparel page. But if not, it's uh, broshow underscore apparel underscore on Instagram. And on Twitter, you can find me at uh, broshow24. I'm up. active. I'm very active yeah. on my social media, so make sure you guys follow me. Um, I, I have fun with y'all, man. Uh, and, and yeah, that's oh, you can find my merchandise. Shit, I got a link in my bio, man. So when you follow me, you are gonna go to my my profile page. You are gonna see my my bio. Make sure y'all go support, man. And I really appreciate it. Yes. It's not for me. Hey. It's for my son. Hey, not man. for me. It's for my son. Support black businesses all the way around, man. That's the love. We need that. All right, man. So here we go, guys. This is what everybody be tripping off of. This is the Bobby Dollar Show famed question. I ask this question to every single one of my guests. Exact same question. It don't matter where it take you, how it make you feel. Um, 
you want to cry, you want to get mad, you want to turn your fucking mic off and say, fuck this shit. It don't matter, bro. I want you to be you. I want you to come from your heart and you just answer this question, man, the best way you know how. All right. So my last question for you, Delvin. I know we heard the story about what you went through with the adversity and breaking your neck in three places and, you know, all the stuff that you went through with the NFL. But if you can tell me and my listeners, man, a short story about a time in your life, an experience, a person, a book, a quote, um, just a, a moment of clarity or, or just something you've seen that made you who you are, the man, Delvin Bro, today. Uh, yeah, man. Um, I, w- I want to say it was in 2015. We was in the Saints. Uh, we was in the Saints team meeting room, um, and, and, and a guy by the name of Richard Makowitz, Machowitz, Makowitz. He was a Navy SEAL. Yeah. Um, uh, coach had us watching an interview he did with the Oakland Raiders. Uh, I want to say back in 2009. Um, and, and one thing that stuck out with me from that whole thing was he mentioned how you can count on me. Um, anything he did, man, he wanted to put the team on his back. Uh, his yeah. quote was, not dead, can't quit. Yeah. Not dead, can't quit. I like that. And that stuck out with me, man. Um, it, 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 it really, you know, sent chills down my, my, my arms when he said that, man, because it, it, it solidifies my story of perseverance. As long as I'm not dead, I ain't quitting. Yeah. I'm never fucking quitting, man. You hear me, yeah. dog? Not yeah. dead, can't yeah. quit. I love that, um, man. And, and, and I, 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 that stick with me, man, till this day. That's my quote I put on everything, man, because it, it, it solidifies, you know, uh, the strength and the courage it took for me to overcome that shit and, and, and make it to where I'm at in my life, man. So I always tell myself, man, not dead, can't quit. If I ain't dead, I ain't fucking quitting, man. That's what's up, man. And, and shout out to Richard, man. He passed away, you know, um, due to brain cancer, cancer um, a couple years back. But uh, that, that quote, man, he's forever going to live with me, man. And I'm going to take that quote and go with it, man. And, and I'm going to spread it around the world to where people could continue to keep uh, uh, using that, that, that uh, momentum, man. I like that, man. Not dead, can't quit, man. That's real talk right there, man. If you ain't dead, you can't quit. It shouldn't even be a reason why you wanted to. Don't even put that negativity in the air. You hear me? Hey, hey, it's love out here, man. Hey, I can only appreciate, you know, what life brings, man, when when it brings greatness. And um, today we witness greatness, man. We witness adversity. We witness overachievement. We witnessed all the possibilities suggestions, stories, shit, any and everything that brought you to this point of understanding what a man really is. You know what I'm saying? We met Delvin and he showed us that today, man. You can overcome anything. Not dead, can't quit. You hear me? Hey, I appreciate you, bro. Thank you for showing up today, man. Showing up and showing out. Um, Hey, man, y'all tune in. Like this episode, subscribe to the channel. Hey, it's the big homie. It's been the Bobby Dollar Show. Go dummy, go beast on them. I go beast. Go deep, I OD on them. Apply pressure, put heat on them. Put that five zero degrees on them. Go dummy, go beast on them. I go beast. Go deep, I OD on them. Apply pressure, put heat on